So you are now celebrating your 37th uh, anniversary as a band. Nick's the only uh, member in the band who's been there from the beginning, 1978, mm -hmm. and he formed the band with some school friends. And uh, I first met Nick. Um, I was best friends with his younger brother, who's two years younger than Nick, Paddy, Patrick. And um, so I used to go and see the band just as a friend. And I had my own uh, sort of covers band at that time. And after they'd done maybe five or six shows, uh, in those days Pendragon was a five piece and they had uh, two guitarists. Zeus Pendragon. Zeus Pendragon. And their second guitarist left the band, a guy called Julian. And uh, so Nick asked me to join the band. So I joined the band in 1981. We had big dreams, we always had big dreams. We always, like any band, we wanted to be successful and tour the world and make successful albums and write our own music. Those were our dreams. And if we could make money out of it as well, great. Um, and we just wrote the music that came from our hearts, really. And, uh, uh, and then in the early days, we had different writers in the band. And then gradually, Nick wrote more and more of the music and, and sort of formed the style of the band uh, to what it is today. Um, I guess at one point in the early days we thought we might just stay in that west part of, of, of the UK, of England, in, which is called Gloucestershire, which is where Pendragon is from. But then we met a band called Marillion, I'm sure you've heard of, of in 1982. Mm. And the manager we had then put Pendragon as support to Marillion uh, in Gloucestershire. And the band Marillion were very kind to us and they said come and support us at the Marquee Club in London and they were just been signed by EMA, mm. EMI Records so they were just on the verge of becoming really big and so they got us into the London circuit and uh, that got us out of just a local area mm -hmm. and Marillion also offered us our first uh, European uh, show outside of the UK which was in Holland and then once we got to Holland, we started, Nick started building up relationships with different promoters and we gradually got as far as Poland then. Mm. So it just grew and grew. Jan Vincent, um, he was friends, or he knows Craig Blundell, who, yeah, yeah. who toured with mm. Pendragon in 2014 on the Many Climb Mountains tour. And uh, Craig was then suddenly offered the job to drum in the Stephen Wilson band, so he had to take that really. So um, he recommended Jan Vincent to us and then you came in for two festivals, didn't you? To yeah, start yeah. With. Uh, Lorelei and uh, Ramblin. And, so and uh, just take it, took it from there. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, a drummer called Fudge Smith who was with the band for 20 years mm -hmm. and with Clive and Nick and I that formed a, a bit of a very solid relationship mm -hmm. and then Fudge left just on the after the Believe recording and then for a few years it was kind of uh, changeable things changed a lot um, but each drummer we had I mean we had a, a session guy called Joe for a while who was really good um, then we had Scott Hyam who again was really good and, and Scott's style suited those two particular albums that he played on Passion and Pure which were sort of heavier sound for Pendragon and then I think uh, Vinny, as we call him, brings, okay. Jean Vincent brings, uh, he brings a good mixture style. So he brings like a heavy, can do a heavy style, but also uh, the dynamics, so yeah. quieter stuff, jazzier stuff, which some of the Pendragon is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, he's versatile, which is great. Cool. Yeah, I think whoever you have brings a, their personality yeah, and yeah. their experience and their knowledge yeah. to, to. I guess yeah, I guess that's the thing with you know drummers. I don't believe in you know best you know drummer. Everyone's got their own different style. Different, it's like you know, it's like language, like how I talk, how I, other drummers speak, and you know, everyone's different. So, like he said, everyone's. Uh, it's got different style and different sounds. So. And it doesn't matter how long you've been playing, you're always learning, aren't you? Yeah, you're yeah, always exactly, learning yeah. something new. It's so. a never-ending you know. journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you are often uh, compared with the bands such, as you said, Marillion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Pink Floyd, even Genesis. Uh, how do you feel about these comparisons? Because I feel that that your music is kind of inspired by many, many other things. Yeah. Well, you've got you've got four guys who were in the band who are all inspired by different types of music. So if you asked us all individually, our music tastes are quite wide. So Clive comes from a classical background originally. He originally, when he was young, he hated rock music. And it was only when he got seconds out by Genesis, he then got into rock music. Um, Vinny, you've grown up with yeah. sort of rock, classic rock, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, classic rock. rock, yeah, a lot of, uh, well, initially, just hard rock, hard rock bands like Guns N' Roses. Yeah. I think every, every kid in my generation kind of, mm -hmm. in one way or another, was influenced by those kinds of bands and then I just took a different route, okay, progressive music. Mm -hmm. I think, well, actually it was, my, it was my uncle who introduced me to progressive music. He gave me a CD of Rush mm -hmm. and, you know, so that was my influence, rock and progressive music. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Nick and I are very wide. I mean, we both like a French singer called Charles Aznavour, who's a sort of like a crooner. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Sinatra I love. Um, some country music I love, a Canadian singer-songwriter called Gordon Lightfoot I love. I like some dance music. I like uh, obviously some progressive. I'm quite choosy about what progressive I like. Mm. Um, I like bands who are kind of do, trying to do something new. I um, mean, in the prog field, I like bands like Anathema, Riverside, of course, from Poland. I think my favourite Polish band. Um, obviously, Porcupine Tree and the yeah, stuff Stephen Wilson's yeah. doing. Um, so there's a lot of, um, there's an English band called Big Big Train. So there's some interesting bands out there in the progressive field doing some good good things. But Pendragon writing style is much wider. But I guess Nick and my favourite band when we grew up was a band called Camel. It's a t-shirt I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, mm -hmm. so Camel, Genesis, Pink Floyd, obviously we, we those were the bands we grew up with as well. So our music does sound a bit like that mm. because you kind of write what you're influenced by. You are also celebrating the 20th anniversary of publishing the Masquerade Overture. Uh, what do you think is so special about this album that you felt necessary to, to remind it and to, to make a tour over it? It was... Um, the th there may be... People have their own favourite Pendragon album, but I think a lot of people, for a lot of people, it is the Masquerade Overture is their favourite album. Mm -hmm. It's our best-selling commercial album, and also it came in the middle of the 90s when the height, when CD market was at its height. So it did very well, it had a lot of promotion. We were distributed by EMI in those days, so it had a good distribution. Uh, across Europe, across the world. And I think just some albums, they have like um, a whole feel to them, complete piece of music from start to finish. Um, it just flows. A good album should flow from start yeah. to finish. And The Masquerade, it has that. It, you'll hear it when we play it tonight. It just goes from one, flows from one song to the other. And uh, I think Nick wrote some very good melodies on the Masquerade, and, and people just seem to like those songs. Um, you know, you got popular live songs like Masters of Illusion, which is a qu just quite a rocky mm -hmm. song uh, with a big guitar solo at the end. You've got Shadow, which is maybe more of a slightly more genesis -y type song. You've got Guardian, which is a more technical kind of song. So you've got different yeah. styles going through that. So I think I think people like to remember that memory of when they first bought that CD. And uh, it, a lot of bands are doing that now, just doing a, a tour on a specific album. So mm -hmm. so we we wanted to celebrate that anniversary. Of, and of the uh, on the tour, you're playing only the songs from the from the um, this album, or maybe some new songs and... and yeah, well, huh? uh, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, we're, <laughs> we're definitely not playing just the Masquerade mm -hmm. Overture album. We'll, yeah, well, spoil something. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, let's just say um, there'll be some some songs off the, the last album, yeah, the most yeah. recent album. A couple of songs from that. Uh, Man, Man Who Claimed Mountains. Yeah. There'll be one, one new song that we've never played live before tonight um, until this tour. Um, so that people hopefully will enjoy that. And it's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a surprise, definitely. 
Um, so yeah, it would be the first half will be masquerade material, and then we will do selection of of, of so other songs. Yes. What what should we expect now after the tour? I th I think when you're younger, you may be ten you may be more influenced by what other people think. Um, so you, maybe you try to tend to write. Certainly, when we were trying to get a, a major record deal in the uh, in the eighties, we were sometimes trying to write more commercial type mm. songs as well as the progressive songs. But I think now Nick just writes what comes from his heart, and I think that's the truest music. Yeah. You you write whatever comes out at the time, and each album, each Pendragon album, is always going to be different. It's always going to be slightly different from the one before. So we're never maybe cover exactly the same ground before, like Masquerade Overture was an album of its time for that moment in time, and then Men Who Climb Mountains was maybe a, a kind of more reflective kind of album in some ways about very deep subjects, and uh, so I don't know what the next album will be yet, mm -hmm. but Nick has played me, you know, some ideas which sound very good, yeah. and I think we're aiming for probably 2017 for the for the to bring the next album mm -hmm. out. So we're looking forward to it, and it'll yeah. be the first album with, with yeah. Vincent on it. Yeah. So. yeah, actually, I was gonna I was gonna say that um, I had the privilege of hearing some of the songs for the new album that Nick Nick is working on, and mm -hmm. I, all I can say is it's gonna sound really different. I think I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really excited and the fact that like you said I'm gonna be playing drums on it.